seventh uh, international conference will be held here at the new campus of University of Bamberg. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, welcome uh, so many old friends and, and guests uh, from all over uh, Europe. And first of all, I would like to introduce to you um, the Vice President of the University of Bamberg, uh, Professor Guido Wirtz. Okay, good afternoon everybody. I have the pleasure and the honor on behalf of the University of Bamberg uh, and our president. We are happy that our youngest faculty, uh, after 12 years now on the work of becoming even a teenager, uh, uh, is more and more established in the computer science world and we have this nice and prestigious conference here. Uh, at our also, vielen Dank für diese Einladung. Es freut mich immer in Deutschland zu sein und es freut mich insbesondere die Gelegenheit zu haben, dass ich über diesen Gebiet äh, sprechen zu können, zu diesen Personen, die äh, das besonders gut kennen sind. <lacht> So, problem is, what can we say about the distribution, about, about the uh, time, the total, for the total task, uh, given that we know the distributions of the task time and the figures? In Paris, isn't it how, how rigorously we have done uh, all these pictures uh, uh, here? So, two distributions without possibly light tail, the distribution of the uh, task time and the beta time distribution, but if uh, only if this assumption of infinite support, then we're going to get something negative. So thank you for the introduction. Thank you to Udo for inviting me here to come back to Frankfurt. It's a pleasure. Uh, I've known Udo for a long, long time also. 25 years, I think, was just calculating. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, some reflections I've been having over the last few years on information-centric networks. So like a lot of people, I've been looking at this new paradigm for a future internet. We've been working uh, in a project within France on this for about three years. But then there's a tail. This tail is constituted by uh, a continuously decreasing slope. Uh, we've actually modeled it by a set of linear segments decreasing from a slope of 1 to 15, or minus, 15, or minus 1 to minus 15. Right. So I'm going to talk to you about my reflections. First of all, observe that most internet traffic is now content, delivering content, not real time, but stored content in one form or another. And this is coming across the internet from servers, often in the US or from Google. We, we learned this morning that Google's spread over the world, but there, there are central kind of data centers, huge data centers. We've got CDNs which occur within the network at different, at different points, depending on the particular CDN operator after my line out or they have different policies, Google also. And this, Jim, yes. on behalf of this community, I would like to hand over to you a trans uh, product of a transformation process. <laughs> the people from Würzburg were able to transform the hardware of the city hall of Bamberg into software. Oh. And I hope it's possible to transfer this package by the help of Air France, or oh, I, know, I call it Air France, <laughs> from Nuremberg International Airport to your home in Paris. Thank you and very we much. all appreciate this great insight that you give you us with regard to the next generation internet, and we hope that the next generation Jim Roberts will come back to Bamberg or any other German site where we celebrate MMB again. Thank you very much.
very much looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to have been invited to come here, but I'm sorry I will present some kind of a downer to you, because I want to speak today of the topic when you cannot use network analysis. So that's quite a devastating finding, huh? So we should be able to navigate in complex networks and complex spaces, but it seemed that we are not so good at that. Thank you for a brilliant introduction. And the question to the audience is, what is the pass between uh, swipe and flying? Uh, it's flying, and then you erase the first uh, letter because it's a razor channel when I'm speaking. And what is between Bamberg and Kaiserslautern is worse work. And the winemakers have really uh, made a uh, uh, performed a miracle. They could perform a transformation between hardware of the city hall and software. And we hope that you appreciate this companion on your long ride with Deutsche Bahn from Bamberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy to introduce our guest speaker, and I always have to, now well, you may have to help me again with your name, it's Warren Van Hedenheim. Yeah. Yeah, close, close yeah, enough. Close, close. Um, the topic is really interesting, and Ward will talk about the energy consumption of ICT and different approaches to model consumption of the technology that most of us use to conserve energy at other places. However, the technology also consumes energy and how much that is and how this will evolve um, will be presented by Paul. The paper is quite new. It is already frequently cited, so it's, it's one of the high impact publications um, that, that we've seen in this domain. And I'm really happy that you will share your insights on this topic with us in the next 45, 50, 50 minutes. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So, good morning again. The pleasure is completely mine. Uh, um, we wanted to look at the current situation. At that time, that was the year 2012. Yeah, 2012. We wanted to see, okay, what's the consumption in 2012, but also what were the trends in the last five years, so from 2007 to 2012. How fast was uh, the electricity consumption in ICT growing? And had uh, an insight as well on the potential future evolutions. And these insights would then give us an idea as well of okay, if we want to reduce the energy consumption, for ICT, where should we focus on? But these were the two main motivations. And welcome to the final session of the um, socket workshop. I'm delighted to welcome our guest speaker, Professor Peter Glover. Peter is uh, juggling several hats, so first of all he's a research scientist at the Center for Collective Intelligence at MIT Sloan School of um, Management. But he's also honorary professor at the University of Cologne, a lecturer at Alto University in Helsinki, and a distinguished visiting professor at Universitat Cattolica de Chile. Yeah? <laughs> um, as many of you know, he's a leading expert on the intersection of social networks, innovation, and collective intelligence. And yeah, we are grateful and honored to have you here, Peter. And uh, all of us are looking forward to your talk. So please join me in welcoming uh, Professor Flora. So thank you very much Hi, for inviting me. I would like to talk to you in the next hour about a series of projects that we have been doing on trying to find patterns of innovation. And in more technical terms, what this means is longitudinal social network analysis. We have interaction patterns among people, and the lucky thing is that team gave us the means of studying how those coins, learning networks, interest networks evolve over time with the World Wide Web. Although the key means that I'm using, email, which by the way, I think was invented by David Clark, my first boss at MIT, 
which also means that we cannot just look at changes in networking structure, but we also do a lot of content analysis, and we look at changes in word usage, and we look at emotionality of content, and how this evolves over time. Or to put it in other words, we get a lot of independent variables to predict innovation. Now, innovation is really hard to measure, and whether it's creativity and it's not the same, and then we have innovation on the individual level, and we have what I call swarm creativity, that's sort of the big concept where the coin is the core. That's uh, really hard. 